Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and welcome back to another video about Battlefield 5. Today, I want to tell you guys, if you're solo queuing or you want to play Lone Wolf, how to do it on Aerodome. Now, what I don't mean is, like, you're going to play without squad mates, okay? Battlefield, the way that it's built, you need to work with your squad mates, you need to have squad mates. But if you're going to be that guy, you know, not on comms, you just want to chill, play the game, you know... This is how you would do it on Aerodome. This is how I would do it. You know, there's a lot of strategies. I would love to hear yours in the comments below. But we're going to get started with this. Now, the thing is, if you're going to play Lone Wolf, the way that I like to do it is a sniper or a long range class. I prefer the sniper class because of the spawn beacons, okay? Now, with the spawn beacons, um, what I do is I'll chill at the top of the map or the bottom of the map. And kind of watch, you know, okay, are we pushing C? Do we have C? Do we not have C? And kind of put my spawn beacons in positions to flank C or flank other objectives. That's what I use it for and help my teammates out. Then when I'm sniping, um, I always do this when I'm sniping. Well, most of the time, if I remember, if I'm actually trying, I'm going to snipe other snipers first and keep them occupied so that they don't pick off my teammates. Now, if C, which is always the objective that's being fought over, if you don't have control of C, or you do, and there's all the fighting at C, probably not going to need to snipe other snipers. You're probably just going to need to look out for the flanks and stuff like that. Now, the other thing that I'll do, if I'm playing this all by myself, is I'll watch the mini-map and see, okay, let's say you're playing the German side, and they have A, B, and C, and we don't have A, B, and C. We have the other three. What I'll do is I'll be like, okay, well, B's at the top. I'm going to flank around and capture B because they're probably not going to be at B. I, I think that, at least for me in my experience, a lot more people spawn at A to go to C or they'll spawn at C than B. So I'll flank around to B, put a spawn beacon down and kind of start capping it or let my teammates spawn on it and start capping it and then use that as a distraction or to flank C. Or the other way around, I'll take the radio thing if we're on the British side and then go through it that way. Um, Hamada, or Aerodome like that is a very simple map. There's not a lot of strategy for me when it comes into playing, like, all by myself. And I don't usually play this game all by myself. I usually play it with friends. But that's kind of the basic strategy I use. Now, if you're using a longer range class, like maybe a support with a mounted machine gun or assault with a semi-auto gun, I always push objectives with that class. But the way that I do it is I start picking off people, and then because of the way that the objectives are spaced out in Aerodome, like the, what I call the flanking objectives, the ones you take to help flank C, you can use long range because the other spawn points are far away, unless of course they have the spawn beacons. And if you're using support or assault, I noticed that the scoped weapons and mounted weapons can do really good at close range as well. It's just a little bit harder to use them. So that's pretty much what I do. A lot of it lone wolfing on this map is flanking. The reason why I wouldn't say go to C is because there's going to be so many enemies that if you have callouts, you're going to have an advantage. Think of it as when you go to C, you need to play like it's Rainbow Six Siege. Keep your corners, keep your angles, kill them one at a time, and know that there's going to be callouts everywhere. I find that when I'm playing with my friend Austin and we both attack C at the same time, we give callouts. We usually take C a lot easier than if I'm just playing by myself, running in there, going, you know, guns blazing, killing everyone. So I think that if you're going to take C, have a coordinated attack or have a strategy. Have like a detailed strategy that you're going to stick to. I, that's just what I noticed in my part on Aerodome. But that's really it for this episode, guys. This is for Conquest because that's like really the only game mode I play on this game is Conquest, which is strange. I like Frontlines, but... The more and more I played this uh, Battlefield 5, the more and more that I've liked Conquest on it. I think it's just you know, really fun. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below, guys. If you have any strategies you'd like to use on Aerodome when you're playing by yourself, feel free to share those in the comments as well. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, Instagram post, community post, all the stuff, whatever I decide to make. Oh, God. All right. Bye. Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and welcome back to another video on how to play Battlefield 5 when you're solo queuing. And this is not for those who want a lone wolf, 
you know, stay as like the Lone Ranger. I'm gonna go away from my squad, do my own thing. No, this is for if you want to play Battlefield 5, help your squad out, but you don't want to be on comms, you just want to chill out. This is about the map Eris. Now I have two strategies for Eris, and one revolves around support class, and one revolves around assault class. Now, when I'm using assault, I always, 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 always prioritize killing vehicles over taking objectives, because that's what assaults do. So, just know that if there's vehicles, whatever strategy I tell you after this, vehicles take number one priority. So when I'm playing as assault, I use automatic weapons and I stay inside the town area, like the kind of middle of the map. That's where I find myself as assault doing a lot of damage. And the main part being is, especially in the beginning of the game when everyone thinks they're safe behind cover, if I carry explosives I can blow stuff up and really kind of ruin their day. You know, later on the match kind of goes on, the place most likely just gets completely obliterated and there's no houses anymore except for the basic bare bones. But that's fine because the houses are still kind of spaced in a way that assault rifles work really well. And I don't, I really try not, if I'm actually going to try, I try not to use semi-auto rifles um, when I'm going in. The M1A1 is the exception because it's the M1A1. I mean, the M1A1 is like kind of automatic, kind of semi-auto, you know, you don't know. But that's what I do if I want to play assault. Now, the other strategy that I'll use is I'll play support. And... I'll repair vehicles, but I'll use I'll use an automatic weapon, probably a, a Lewis gun or a new gun that I have I want to try, but most of the time, if I want to really try, it's the Lewis gun, and I stay on the outer four objectives, because I feel like without the explosives and with the slower fire rate that the, the Lewis gun gives, I don't have quite a... I feel like I lose my gunfights in the town, so I'll stay out of the town, but I'll focus on taking those side objectives, you know, longer ranges, especially with the bipod, that's going to help with the longer ranges, and if someone uses a tank and they decide, hey, I don't want to die off spawn, go in the middle of town, get blown up by five assault classes, they're going to be going around the edges, so it gives you an opportunity to repair them and keep them alive longer. And, you know, you got that ammo crate. Um, what I really like to do with the ammo crate is if someone's a medic, drop it, have them resupply on smokes, if they have the smoke launcher. Because smokes, from the bottom objectives to the top objectives, using smokes to push that way, especially on the right side of the map where it's like nothing but a field, really important. One thing I want you to remember when you're playing as Assault is that objective in the top right of the map, I don't know the letters yet enough, so the objective in the top right of the map there's a lot of trench fortifications you can build there. So especially if you're on the German side and you want that objective, take it and build the fortifications as support because that's going to give you some extra cover. That's going to make it so you're not going to die as often or you at least have more chances to kill someone. Maybe flank around them, do whatever you need to do, wait for teammates to spawn in. If there's a medic with a smoke grenade, you know, do that thing. But that's really it for this video, guys. Uh, that's how I play as the solo queue on Eris. I would love to know how you guys like to play. You know, it's always interesting. I feel like the more I play Battlefield 5, the more I realize that there's no set way to play. This is just my way to play. I'm sure that there are people that are recon mains or medic mains that know how to play this map as a medic or a recon. That's just how I play this map. But that's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, you can tell me in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new for more Battlefield 5 videos. I'm Pacific the Couch Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I'll see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or Instagram post of whatever I decide to make.